Uh, okay, uh, I'd like to uh, open the Architectural Board of Review for today, Monday, October 31st, uh, uh, beginning with uh, general business. I item A, anyone in the public would like to uh, have a question or comment before the board on an item not on the agenda? Please step forward. Seeing no one, I'd close that portion. Bring it back to approval of the minutes of the ABR meeting, October 17th, 2011. Can I have a motion to open those minutes? Uh, first by Gary, second by? I'll second the motion. By Keith, thanks. Uh, do we have anything before item one? Item one. Mm. Item two. Okay, all those in favor of the minutes as reviewed, please say aye. 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 Against that motion carries. Um, let's see, we have a consent calendar for October 21st, uh, motion to open the consent calendar for October 24th, uh, first by Keith, second by Dawn, consent calendar is normally read by staff. Chair Manson Hing, uh, it looks like for the... October 31st? Sorry, I have for the 24th and the 31st, to my... Yeah, yeah, 24th. So the 24th, uh, 24th, 1032 East Mason Street, final approval with conditions to plant Diamondia with ornamental grasses in the parkway. <laughs> Item B was 1312 Gutera Street, final <laughs> approval of the architecture continued one week for landscaping and irrigation plan. Item C was... 602 East Sola Street, postpone one week to the consent calendar. And then... And so all those in favor of the consent calendar for October 24th as read, please say aye. Aye. Against yeah. that motion carries. And now a motion to open October 31st consent calendar. I just read it. First by Keith, second by Dawn. Okay, October 31st. This one uh, for October 31st. Um, item A, 2222 Bath Street. It's postponed for one week. Item B, 300 West Ortega Street was uh, approved with conditions. Item C, 2206 Oak Park Lane was final approval with conditions. Item D, 320 West Pueblo Street was approved with conditions. Item E, 1321 APS was final approval as submitted. Item F, 1312 East Gutierrez was final approval of the landscape plan with conditions. And item G, 602 East Solo Street is final approval as submitted. And those were reviewed by, uh, um, it's not a commission, this is a board member. Yeah. Board member. <laughs> Sorry, I usually do HLC. Keith Rivera and Chris Gilliland. Thanks very much. All those in favor of those minutes as reviewed, please say aye. 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 Against that, motion carries. Okay, so. That brings us to item D, announcements, requests by applicants for continuances and withdrawals, future agenda items and appeals. And I think, uh, Danny, you had something to... Yeah. Chair Manson Hink, thank you. Danny Cotto from uh, the planning staff. I'm the development review supervisor. I just wanted to notify the ABR members again that tomorrow morning, we are going out to the airport for a site visit to see story poles for the um, the tea hanger proposal at 404 Moffat Place. So I know that two members of the board have already responded that they'll they'll be coming. Um, board members Zink and Chair Manson Hing. So I wanted to make sure that the rest of you had the opportunity. I know that we've sent some emails, but I haven't. I've only heard back from the two. So um, it's a, we'll be leaving here at 7:45 in the van. And then it'll you know, be about probably a little less than an hour, probably a little bit more than an hour of transit time. And we'll go to the site, look at the site, look at the um, story poles, and then go into the terminal past security so that we can um, we can see out from those south facing windows. Uh, any other takers? What's the, um, Is there any alternative time? Because I can't make that. Um, the story poll should be up for a little while, so you'll be able to go see them yourself, but you can't go through security, you know, into the terminal. Well, 
maybe maybe you can if you talk if you talk to me and we can we can arrange something. But so, so far, this is the only time that I know that's available. Is somebody going to be bringing photos um, from the upper window, looking down at the story poles at the next meeting? Mm -hmm. Yes. Then that's really all I would. I, okay. I think that's all I'm concerned about. So. Since okay. I can't make it. Great. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Any other announcements? Yes, Mr. Chair, I'll be stepping down from item two. Okay. That's one of my, one of my projects. And okay, then uh, item E, uh, subcommittee reports, of which we don't have any at this time. And that brings us to the end of general business and the first item of the evening, 422 to 448 Santa Fe Place. Are not um, stapled? Can you just put them over there? Or something? Oh, okay. These aren't stapled. Oh, okay. oh. I, it's probably better that they're not. You guys can rip it off the staple. Yeah. You don't have to. Yeah, sorry. I mean, only sold to a man in one, so I'm sorry about that. Hi, my name is Stephanie Poole, and I'm here representing Zarin and Associates. Um, and uh, Bridgepoint Construction, um, who uh, we did the drawings for this project back in 2005 and six. Went through uh, ABR in 2006 and um, began construction in 2008 um, with a former developer that uh, went into bankruptcy, and so the project's been sitting um, for a while and a new new developer came in and started construction and um, they're out of the ground and I have brought some pictures to show to share with you uh, the developer um, has made a few substitutions that we want to get your approvals on um, and today he would like to have your um, approval on a substitution for the roof the roofing uh, to be um, s tiles instead of uh, barrel tiles and uh, our two-piece barrel tiles and uh, that's some half the project half these townhomes are affordable and would fall under the city's um, um, approvals for for s tiles and substitution so anyway uh, first I'll start with showing you guys the status of the project as it is now these are the old color drawings or color boards. Here are some pictures of the site. This is from Cliff Drive, looking up at the site, and it's from Santa Fe Place, looking up at the site. Then this is from above the site, up on um, La Vista del Oceano for which this was also uh, part of the same project. It was, there are some custom homes associated with this Rogers track that um, we're also building. So we gave you some views from up there. But uh, in general, and these are some of the ones, uh, townhomes, first four that have windows in them. And some of the window cladding colors have uh, changed from what was approved, and I just want to get clear on that with you guys. So um, I have more pictures. If you guys want to see more pictures of the the site, um, um, you guys want to scan through any of those to see down there. Um, first of all, the as far as the roofing tiles go, this is a photograph of what the S tiles might look like. They're going to do um, at the eave lines um, barrel tiles, the first row of barrel tiles, and then S tiles above that. We would do barrel tiles on all the hips and ridges. And there will be a blend of the roof tile colors, um, and each one um, will have a different. Uh, blend. 
So, um, the other thing uh, I, I want to go through is the cladding colors. Let's see. Um, when we initially, yeah, um, the approved colors basically was really was um, this was harvest cranberry, and they have gone with this uh, this mesa uh, colonial red. So it's really Android. close in color. Yes, okay. it's it's very close in color. So um, the other substitution was instead of this evergreen was um, this green and or well sage green I think was a substitute for this green and they not, they're not doing this evergreen. They're doing a slate blue and a brown. So it's four colors instead of five. Okay. All right. And then these are the colors you're proposing? Oh, uh, no. I brought um, the colors are, let's see, um, red and Tuscany for um, uh, 1430, 1432, 1442, and 1444. There'll be a 40, uh, 60, 40% 40 Tuscany, which is this, and a 60% red. The second blend is a medium kind of blend of fire flash, um, terror, El Camino, and, um, and then the third blend is uh, red. It's a darker, darker blend there. So um, those are the kind of the, the blends of the colors the, and the ratios that they're going for. Okay. Um, you said some of the uh, <coughs> units are affordable. Yes. Um, can you um, the, elaborate on which ones are affordable? Uh, the first, let's see. Um, okay, so the first townhome, 14, 22, and 24, the first one is a market rate, and the second one, 14, 24, is a, an affordable. And then um, the next uh, three are uh, affordable, and the, the last three are market rate. So there's seven townhomes, essentially seven duplexes, or 14 townhomes. And out of those, how many total are affordable? affordable. Five. Five out of 14. Oh, let's see. No. Two, six, seven? Seven half, seven out of I think. Yeah. Seven out of 14. I think so, Affordable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the detached single-family homes are not affordable. And the, de the single-family, no, no, The detached single-family homes are not a part of this, oh, okay. uh, this um, meeting or this consideration. Okay. It's really just for the townhomes. Okay, and just for the uh, board uh, knowledge here, under the general guidelines here, uh, for cost consideration for affordable multifamily housing projects, the ABR shall take the total cost of the applicant's design into consideration when reviewing affordable housing projects where all units qualify as affordable housing. All units. Um, blah, blah, blah. Mr. Mr. Chair, can I uh, clarify that? Please. Is there a clarification? There? Yes, because uh, under the current guidelines, mm -hmm. it doesn't make that distinction. This was a uh, revision that this board made or requested to be made. So what you have there is the proposed language. And um, under the current language, it makes no distinction that all the units need to be affordable. That this board thought that that seemed to be the one of the criteria that should be utilized in the future. Okay. So technically, um, that guideline is future policy, a guideline, but it, it can be considered in the context of how you choose to uh, decide whether it's a cost consideration okay. for this project. So this is for the future. For the future, you still have the ability under the current guideline to accept cost as a consideration. Secondly, um, under Hillside Design Guidelines, oh, it's not. under the uh, NPO, we have two uh, guideline references on S-Tile. And um, in new construction, uh, there's a guideline that indicates that it's generally not acceptable in new construction. 
Uh, we've allowed, as tile for re-roofs, as you know, when they make a hardship claim for the weight loading. Um, so again, you have to tread carefully as to why new construction would be allowed um, this exception. Right. And I think it will probably be tied to the cost consideration issue rather than, you know, some other type of um, uh, hardship. But you can explore that. Okay. Thanks. With that, I'd bring it up for public comment. Um, Seeing no one, I'll close that portion and bring back to the board for questions. Starting from the left, um, Chris, do you want to go or you want Keith to start off? Or? Um, I don't really have any. Uh, no, no questions? No questions right now. Okay, Keith. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just to clarify, what was previously approved was uh, two piece and the terracotta and not a blend. Correct. It was all the same. Thank you. Thanks. Dawn? Yeah, um, Stephanie, you're still proposing the the um, double later starter yes. at the eve and booster tiles. And booster around. tiles round and booster tiles, fifteen percent. Okay. okay. Uh, Gary. No questions. No questions. Four. Um, okay. Uh, question: Are all the uh, styles from that? Company from this company that you're proposing, yes. are they all the same in shape? Yes. They're all the same in shape. It's just the color that differences, right? Yes. And it's really, it's, you really don't see the, the townhomes from any close location, any um, surrounding areas where you would see it from above, they're very distant because there's just nothing around them. Um, from driving from the road, you're always looking at them from below. So you don't really know, see the roof. The custom homes above see them. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm going to bring it back to the board for comments. Chris. No comment. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, address the window color first. I don't see an issue there. Those are pretty indistinguishable. Um, on the roof tile, I think I have uh, definitely an issue with the blend and um, I think my reading of the guidelines is that this really should be the, the two piece throughout um, if it were all they were all affordable units I think I'd have more of an inclination to uh, approve the substitution but that's those are my th thoughts thanks Keith go on um, I I think I'm okay with the the S tile um, because of half the units being affordable being the first reason. The second reason being the ordinance hasn't changed and we can take into consideration um, not all of the units being affordable. The third reason is um, the reason of visibility or lack thereof. Mm -hmm. And the fourth reason is the augmentation of the the S tiles with the um, two-piece starter course at the eve and the booster tiles. Um, I would be okay with the, a blend if the blend <coughs> included um, very minimal change in color. Um, Do you think which, that's uh, which, too drastic? I don't think that's too drastic. Okay. Um, this one's a little more drastic than, than that one is. Mm -hmm. so, um, I don't know if it's just because this one's glazed and this one's not glazed. I can't really tell why exactly, but um, I don't. I think I'm okay with a little. I, in fact, I like just a slight variation in color. I think it's kind of nice. So you you afford the blend? I, I'm okay with the blend as long as it's really close, mm -hmm. in, in a, which, which I think it is in this case. Okay, Gary. Um, yeah. I, given the scale of the original project, I'm really not okay with it. You know, I was looking at some of the photos that you gave us um, a little closer up, and some of the existing residents are all two-piece tile, and um, I wouldn't be in favor of the S tile on this particular project, given that it's new construction. So, um, as far as that goes, I'd like to see two-piece barrel tile. The the change of the color of the the fenestration of the doors, I'm okay with that. That's, 
that's an acceptable change. Uh, but uh, I would like to see two-piece tile on it. Thanks, Gary. Paul? Um, I'm, I'm going to say I'm not comfortable with the uh, S-tile, just for the reasons that have been stated. Uh, the, as for the blend, I don't have a problem with that, like Don was saying, as long as the colors are a tight um, variation. Thanks. And you, both of you are okay with the these colors? Or? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. For me, um, in my comments, I'm, I'm okay with these color changes in, the, in that palette. And uh, I also would uh, prefer that you stick to the two-piece style. Um, again, the blended, I would really want the blended to be very, very close if you do it. Uh, otherwise, just what was previously approved. Um, so I'd, I'd be more looking towards something like that as opposed to something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I definitely think um, that we should stay to the two-piece style under this. Um, I have had some uh, recently talked to a few neighbors up in this area, and I get a sense from them that they're very concerned about the some standards that have been been kind of lowered in their community and. Um, they have expressed some thoughts towards that, and I have to say that that plays a part in some of my thinking here as to um, what some of these neighbors have said about the area. So um, I'm inclined to really stay with what we have approved already. Hmm. Yeah. Except for the, color, the trim on Except the for the trim on the doors, which I think is fine to make the yeah, changes okay. to the doors. Okay. Okay. So uh, with that, um, we're open for a, a motion and from anyone. Yes. Um, can we make a motion that the color colors that were presented are acceptable and that the applicant should bring back a color board for the files reflecting the four color schemes and have staff review them. Um, the recommendation that the S tile is not approved, and that the applicant is to go with a two piece um, tile roof. It can be a um, variegated or a blended palette. And actually, um, I'm, I'm changing, I'm thinking the whole color board should come back to consent just to have them double ch to take a look at it because we don't have the blended look with us right here. So the motion is to continue to consent with the color board for the four different color schemes. The colors for the windows are acceptable. The no S tile blended is okay with slight variation. Thanks, Paul. Um, do we have a second? Second. Second by Gary. Under discussion? No? All those in favor of the motion? If they don't, we didn't even ask her if, if they wanted to do a blended color knowing now that it has to go back to a clay tile. If it doesn't, I don't know why it has to come back to consent. If you want it present. If they want to go back to what was original. Yeah. Right? I, would agree, I would agree with that, that if you wanted to go with the ones, one color, that you could just put together the color board and run it through staff, and it does not have to go through to consent. I so I would, maybe that would make our, it would change our motion if we knew if you were going to propose a blend for your clay tile two-piece. If you're not, then we can approve it right now. Okay. Mr. Chair, does that make sense? Yes. I would just suggest adding that to your motion, Mr. Zink, that yeah. either blended or one color is acceptable too. I'll add that to the motion that if it's to be a blended, it should return to consent. If it's to be one color, that submitting the color board to staff is sufficient. Okay. So, what's the motion? Which one is it? Continued to its consent, no, or is it a final approval? That's why I wanted to ask her. That's we no, never give her a chance know. to answer. She's already approved. Right? I, don't, I don't know what they're. You going don't know to what do. they're yeah. going to say. Yeah. Okay, then we'll just continue. Then. So, so the motion is allowing for for that 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 they have an option. Okay, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Against. Motion carries. Thanks very much. Thank you. And that brings us to the second item of the evening. Uh, Four twenty one East Quarter Street. It's been a long evening, so let's <laughs> let's try to speed this. Let's try to speed it up. <laughs> you guys want to keep? Uh, we have to keep one. You still want to sign? Okay.
Ask them. Ask them. At least one. If you want that one. Christine Brown, architect for the project. Mark Winky, architect. Uh, Chris Gilliland, landscape architect. Uh, am I going? Sure. Okay. okay. Um, so this is coming back to you. It's in construction. And I hope you hopefully you've seen it. It's not far from here on Carter Street. And when we um, and just to remind you, this is a fully affordable uh, apartment complex and daycare center. And. It uh, got most of its funding um, uh, through a federal program, a TCAC tax credit program. So the, the funding on this one is is a it's it's an it's a set amount. We can't get extra, and that's why we were pleased when we finally got our our bids for this. We did have one that pretty much was within we were off by some tens of thousands of dollars. So we knew we could fix it, but we had a viable project. But we did need to do some value, some significant value engineering. We did keep our um, mission tile roof, though. So, but we did have to make some decisions um, to really make a, a significant change in our in our budget, and so that's what we're here to go over with you today. Is kind of the decisions that had to had to be made. Um, to start, uh, if you see on this front, um, you, you, a preliminary review, you had reviewed it like this, but also with a, a kind of a portal wall is what we had called it. It was a very pretty wall that kind of created a um, enclosure to this uh, courtyard between the two buildings. It was a big price tag on that guy. This is uh, poor soils conditions, so these were, I think, three or four 50-foot piles, grade beams, a lot of money. And knowing that you'd like both designs, we knew you know this is a place where, as much as we loved it too, it was just too big of a cost item, not necessary for our program, that we, we said, well, that that's one thing that just has to go. And it, it's right in here. Um, so that's the first item. The outline of where it was and then where sure. it's not. Sure. Yeah, really quick. So right here had been this this portal wall. Okay. Yeah. And now it's now it's gone. So now it's an open courtyard, which, like I said, had been one of the options presented. Okay. And it's but still up a few steps. Yeah. And there's a ramp to get to the other door, so it's not like it's right on the street either. Okay. Yeah. And we did, you know, some things we've kept. You know, it's been judicious. We we've kept a really that sandstone wall. We did it across the street. We feel this is an important part of of this this uh, Italian neighborhood. So we did keep some things like that. So, so that's one item that we had to do. Another one um, around this uh, outdoor daycare area. This had been all plaster wall the whole way around. And it was actually a lot of money that we realized this whole flank is up against the um, city parking outdoor, or our city um, outdoor lot, and up against their chain link fence. And it was actually just a waste of money. It can't be seen. It wasn't doing anything. So we went ahead and we, we kept the plaster wall to the front and returned it so that you can, any, any angle that you could see it off the street, you still see the exact same approved drawings, but we went ahead and did a wood fence around this perimeter coming back to here. So that was the other change. Um, so all internal to the site, or not really, not visible. The third item we needed to look at was this, this whole alleyway that goes to Ortega Street. We had initially done these pockets of landscaping the whole way. What it has right now is currently just a, uh, I think, concrete alleyway, and then there was this one island. So we were significantly increasing the amount of landscaping for what is really a dead, not used, not highly visible alleyway. And this was another kind of big ticket item that we thought, this isn't benefiting anyone in any significant way. 
you're either up against the city lot or up against solid block walls. Nobody's seeing this thing. There's no windows on that wall. There's no windows because they're up against the property line. So we thought, well, you know what, we'll at least, you know, keep the, you know, original amount of landscaping where this island was and we'll, we'll keep a, some little breakup of, of landscaping. But all of this is, is a significant waste. And the cost can be, not only is it this, you know, a significant cost in the landscaping and the irrigation and the cut work and the curbs, but we're in um, hazardous soil material here. So we're at risk. We're digging into native soil that's hazardous, just creating but, uh, what we felt was like an unnecessary risk for the project. Um, you know, every, everywhere else we're building up, we're putting a three-foot cap. So we're, we felt, again, for that reason as well, this was a, a good place to... You know, not do as so much landscaping limited it. And we kept that landscaping area here, here yeah, too and that's, renovated that's it. That's still yeah. so. so and again and from here there's this um, fenced uh, raised area. I think if you remember that from before so none of this can be seen from even from Ortega Street. This is completely your your view is completely blocked. So those are our, our three um, kind of big items that we needed to see happen to get this back into budget. And uh, that's what we had. We did a few things on the inside as well, but that's not for the board to worry about. I don't, did I? Yeah, okay. on the property line. On the property line? What about the property line? This That's okay. Just all this landscaping that was gone? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I not say that? No. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so this was also landscaped all along here. It's like 18 inches of dirt yeah. against the fence. Yeah, but the city, the, the, vines on it. yeah, this has existing vines on it that pretty much fill that in. So we thought again, this was a place to save some money. That's yeah, there was always concern about that bed too, and that you know we didn't know the condition of the soil there, and it is very thin. This this strip here, and the elevation <coughs> is much different than you know the the driveway there, and you're right next to the city lot, and it was going to be difficult to fit that landscaping in there as well. It's a fully thriving hedge, too, yeah. of vines. We, we have a photo of it. We have the original photos that's in there, yeah. Good photos of the original photos. That's right behind that Concrete change. Concrete change. Uh, I'm going to wait a minute. That's at least you know, looking this way, but you know, it just gives you an idea what that looks like. That is a dark photo, but you can kind of see the um, the hedge here. There's that swath. Here's this hedge. So there's a hedge along here, you see? Uh, yeah, it's a chain link fence. Well, I shouldn't say hedge. A chain link fence covered in vine. Right. Yeah. But then it and then, this, so this is not a wall here anymore. Here, you can see it better. We're, we're leaving, taking the wall off. No, there was never a wall. There's only the, the chain link fence it's covered existing. in vines. Yeah, it's yeah. existing chain link fence. So it appears as a property. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I see. This so is what it looks like. like. Yeah. Okay. okay. It's looking right. for more check So this yeah. thing that we're seeing here is a curb. Right. The curb's going to stay? Yeah, mm -hmm. the curb stays. Curb. Mm -hmm. um, Swap. Okay. Uh, All right. Yeah. You can bring back to you. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, do we have a do we have a image of the portal wall as it was originally approved? That we did look at the original proposal of the portal wall, uh, which was the previous approval, just so we could be on the elevations. Use it for reference. There, you can see it elevation right here. We also have the front, the cover. It's easiest to compare the three D model. Do you have the cover, the front of the? Yeah. I think it's uh, that might be good enough, Christine. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah. I think we can visualize. And that one, in all honesty, because we're past the point like of driving piles, I don't know how we putting that back at this point would be. Um, 
So you're basically telling us we don't have a choice. That one we just, you know what? Well, it just wasn't going to be an option, I'm afraid, for us. I knew you'd like it. Okay. <laughs> With that, I'd like to uh, open it for public comment. Seeing no one, I'd close that portion, bring it back to the board for questions. Keith? No questions. Don't? How high is the fence around the daycare now, the wood fence? It's the same, which is, um, it, there's a there's a retaining of about three feet, and then it's like five feet. It's about eight to eight and a half feet. It's on here. I can't remember. It's been a while since I looked at that, to be honest. I probably have it. In a section. In a section. But or, it's less than eight feet. And we, this doesn't have the eight foot it's cap on it because right. it's... Um, it has to be that high. It seems like kind of high for that little yard. It seems like it's going to be a little prison. Well, there. it's only five feet only on the, on the on your kids' side. side. Huh? It's only five feet on the kids' side because it's, it's, it's raised it's up. Because it's raised up. It's in yeah. a floodplain. It's five feet. The kids are going to... They can't see out. They're short. They're not supposed to. Their They're security is very important. Oh, okay. So not allowing people to see in and is critical. So we, lose, we lost the lighthouse corner pieces. Those little lighthouse corner pieces. Lighthouse corner. I, mean, I just saw them on the thing. old one, that little corner thing. Yeah, the, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. It's really nice. <laughs> Gary? Um, so we're removing some trees, is that correct? Off of the project? Do you remember? Yeah. I think there was six jacarandas or something like that. Eight. There was a line of trees um, specified for that. <clears throat> that thin planter alongside the existing fence. And the olive will remain, I suppose you said there was an existing olive there by the trash enclosure on the original plant. Oh. So that olive is, stays there? Existing yes. olive tree? So this area, just, just to clear me up, so that just past that stereo, that stays. But all of these, uh, all of these go. All of this goes, which I'm okay with, but all of these two. Exception of one. And the, the, will the one have a tree in it? A ring, can I have a ring? Um, I... Probably. Well, I have to apply. We wanted to get the feedback on this decision and then have Chris would said he adjust the drawings, his drawings accordingly. But that plan was there. Kind of depends on the irrigation. It's sort of a big factor there. Yeah. All right. Irrigation is part of the. That's the only question I have. Thanks, Gary. Paul? Um, just to follow up on what Don was saying, along where the wooden fence is going, there's actually a three foot block retaining wall, and it's going to be a five foot high wooden fence on top. That's what's going to be in before it was all CMU block. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the, on the landscaping issue, there was a concern. I didn't quite understand the toxic soil stuff. So you had to like, what happens when you want to put in a 24-inch box tree? Do you have to dig up the soil and then you have to export the bad soil someplace and bring in good soil? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. where you know, we'd have to dig out that we were going to have to dig out that whole section, and if it is, it'll get tested. If it tests hot. There's a significant cost, and, and in addition to everything, all our other cost savings that we're looking at that would be incurred for exporting it to a, a safe so facility. So even if you plant one tree versus 25 trees, it, um, you're going to have to do that testing? Uh, or you for test that one, 25 holes? Uh, we'd have to test all of them. All that soil gets stockpiled, and then they test it. So you do stockpile it and mix it, so you don't, it's not each hole. You, you t dig out all those, you stockpile it, it gets tested, and if it is tested above the uh, limits, then that becomes deemed hazardous and has to go to a designated facility, truck to facility. So, so is your question? I'm not so it doesn't, so what Gary was saying is that there's one or two little triangular planter pockets right now, and that if we put one tree in that, existing planter pocket, we're still going to have to dig a hole and that, hole, that soil will have to get tested. Correct. Okay. And so you're saying you're, you're willing to plant one tree? Yeah, I think we would be willing to do that, yeah. Okay. We still have some soil. Um, we're digging out a biosoil right now, so it would be into that pile that it would go. So we, that would be that last bit that we would look at and see if that tested positive hot. 
and then what about the irrigation to the new tree? And that would... That's the concern, is yeah. that how do we get it there? It has to be a saw cut at some point, but we have to determine <coughs> where the closest valve is and, and see how much work it would be to get some irrigation to that. Either that or it could come under uh, maintenance um, uh, service and then hand watering. So a question is, instead of making these planters as large as you want them, can you still put in vine pockets, which don't require as much excavation and exported soil if it happens to be bad soil? I think the from, we originally had thought we were going to do vine pockets and grow vines on those big walls, and the neighbors who own those buildings, yeah, they're not no, walls. they will not allow vines on those walls. The tile co owner and uh, uh, it was that one big pink wall, I think. Yeah, down the on there. Yeah, that wall. Because uh, the transition houses have tried to do that in the past and has been told absolutely not. Okay, thank you. Which is unfortunate, I agree. <laughs> okay. I had one question um, on the proposed wooden wall that is to take uh, place of the rest of that. Do you have a, a design of that wall, the wooden wall? Yeah, I think that I submit the eight and a half by 11 of that as well. It's a dog-eared fence. Um, I, I gave like a, I, I submitted an eight and a half by 11. Uh, it was a sh small drawing, no? With the uh, changes, the with this. Oh, no. it's a um, a dog-eared uh, six-inch plank um, galvanized pipe on the on the inside face. The inside. Yeah. Okay. No, sorry. So it's a square top down like that. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay, with that, uh, bring it back to the board for comments. Keith? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I think given the nature of this project and that it's all affordable, um, I think if you had to make cuts, these are um, you know, good places to do it in the sense that they're, uh, with regard to the landscape and the work in the backs, not visible. Um, it's a very small portion of the project that you know, general public's not going to see. Um, you know, the portal wall was great, but uh, I understand the budget concerns, so uh, I think it's still going to be a nice project, and uh, I think these are approvable tweaks. Thanks, Keith. Dylan? Gary? Um, yeah, I think the portal hall, removal of the portal wall will open it up and leave it a little bit more space between the buildings, so I think that that's actually a fairly good move and changing it to um, a wood fence is also a good move there's, there's an existing wood fence I'm in favor of of just keeping the vines on the existing fence and not add it and get, removing that planter but I'm gonna be opposed to removing the other side um, the trees in the planter space that were added in there was part of the minimal landscaping that this project has it has a lot of hardscape and there's not a lot of landscaping and I think by removing those trees in a parking in a parking area, I thought that the, that corridor with a row of the jacarandas and be blooming once a, uh, once a year was a a beautiful portion of that. Uh, it's somewhat visible to the public because of the chain link fence in the yard, but it's still it still is a corridor, and I think that that landscaping would be missed um, if it, if it was just barren. So, yes, I'm in favor of removing it on the one side, on the fence side. No, I'm not in favor of moving, removing it on the uh, wall side. So, that's my comment. Thanks. Paul? Um, sorry to jump back to a question. I didn't know we were removing landscaping on the property line, line fence side. Is that also happening? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, sorry, I wasn't clear about that. And w the same reason, because of the exporting of soil, because it might be toxic? That was just saving money. And, and, saving money and that, was, <coughs> that was always a questionable bed, just because of how thin yeah. and restricted it is uh, in the existing configuration. And the, the tip tip tree with root barrier, that's being removed? Looks like a tree. Along the fence? Along the fence, you had a big shade tree kind of thing, and, it, and that's... Yes. No, and that's no yes. longer... So that you're not planning on doing this tree? Um, and 
what's an H Y M F L A? It's a Hymenosporum sweet shade tree, kind of an upright columnar tree. Uh, okay, comments? I'm not okay with losing the landscaping there, and to say because there's toxic soil there is your reason for wanting to not do this landscaping, I can't support. You need to have some softness there, or else it looks like an alleyway. And kids that are growing up in a rough side of town with a rough environment, give them something nice and soft, even if it's just the drive out to Ortega Street. The filtered light, the shade, the dapple light, whether you can put vines on the neighbor's building, but if he's saying absolutely not, I mean, I could be okay with vine pockets. I wasn't aware that you were getting rid of the landscaping along the property line side. You need those trees, and in fact, it's even better to have them on the property line side because then you get a fuller canopy to jam a jacaranda tree in that little triangular space. I mean, I was willing to let go of all the saw cutting along that side because I saw that as being expensive and, and more complicated and just popping in a couple vine pockets. Um, but you need to have some form of landscaping along that alleyway. I, that's too much of something to let go of because of the budget. Um, I think our community, our community was built around beautiful landscaping, and we need to make sure that that stays in the project. Okay, thanks, Paul. Um, uh, uh, on the um, on the wood fencing here, I, I, I think that that's fine. Um, changing that out uh, on the portal wall. Um, uh, you know, I, l I lament the loss of it, but I think that it's still going to be fine. Um, uh, so I can see that that's, uh, that's okay to do what you are proposing, which is doing without the wall and opening up the courtyard. Um, on the landscaping, um, I I'm totally fine. Well, I'm fine that you're, you're retaining that, um, uh, when you call it hedge, but that vined wall that's there on the chain link fence. <coughs> Um, I, I really felt that having that western wall of the Tileco building open to the west sun was something that was kind of a, um, an opportunity. That was an area where we really needed to resolve uh, or help. And when you think about the, uh, the benefits of having landscaping right up against the wall, which is now hard to do because of the, the property owner not wanting to have vines, um, uh, and uh, uh, and you weigh the opportunity of the 18-inch wide uh, long planter on the western side. Uh, I don't think that I, I can give up giving away all that planter on the western side because of the green fence, but what I would like to see you really investigate is just in front of those tall areas um, of the building that uh, face the stripe, that uh, angled parking, that a tree or two along that stretch, uh, I think is really the best thing to do so that the west sun throws shadow on that wall and, and, and gives that area uh, a little bit of shade. Uh, so I would ask you, in my, my um, preference would be to investigate just having one or two pockets just for some slim trunk trees right there you know, uh, on that western side property line so that you could go up and then throw shadows on the other wall as opposed to having all those planters on the other wall. Can you just clarify that location on, on the planter? On the so on I'm the fine with you taking out all of these in here. I think having here and here is, is going to work well and you have green here. But what I'm saying is, is that on this building here, um, on these tall structures, anything that you could get in here that would just throw a little bit of moving shadows and stuff like that in here. I, I could certainly see you doing that as opposed to, uh, you know, um, not as opposed to, but versus giving up all of that. So I'm fine with you taking out all of that, but w investigate whether you could put in a slim trunk tree here or a slim trunk tree there in lieu of all of this that you've given out here. That, that would be my proposal. But all the other things, are, I mean, I'm pretty comfortable with it. Um, so that's where I am. Okay, so with that, um, we have a few variations here of, of thought, but um, 
Uh, maybe we could just see where everybody's going to fall. So Mr. Chair, could I just open for a motion? jump in? I think, you know, our, our biggest issues, I think it sounds like the board is comfortable with, it sounds like we could maybe come back with a, you know, a plan addressing your comments on the landscaping here that maybe hits most of the major points. Sure, so we'd be happy if you'd like to come back with okay. them. Yeah. Okay, so you want us to just say, talk on these two? Yeah, because just to recoup what you were saying, I think uh, these guys are both into the, one more of the, uh, the Tipuana tree. We already have one. <laughs> yes. One and more is pretty much all we're looking at. For that so where's the one that's there now? Right here. Okay. Is that existing? Yeah. No, it's proposed. Proposed, okay. Right. But this one's existing, right? That one's existing, yeah. That one's tree, the, tr the tree's not existing. The, yes, the little tree. Yeah, the tree's right. existing. Right. Oh. It's kind of a bonsai oh. like. <laughs> you were proposing the tipu in a, an 18 inch planter? Right. Yeah. So they'd start off really small. I mean, we're talking about 15 gallon pots. And we're, it's because we yeah. were so restricted with the right. width. Right. Yeah. Right. And something right in any way in here mm -hmm. would, would be good. If we put another one, I think that. Okay. Just sure. All. Uh, approve the changes as submitted with the exception of uh, the condition to um, provide an additional tree along the western uh, edge of the angle parking drive and that the uh, uh, revised landscape to come back to consent for approval. Right. So you're approving the architecture and you're withholding that landscape? You come back on consent. Down. Which they are supposed. Yeah. No, he's not. He, no, no. He's, he's the the landscaping is, yeah, the condition is to have approval for the landscape is to add an additional tree along that drive aisle. And, no, and not come back to consent because we have we came up with a solution. Correct. Sorry, I thought it was to come. I have approved changes as submitted with the exception of the landscape. Uh, applicant to provide an additional tree on the West property line, revised landscape plan to come back to consent. Is that incorrect? Oh. Because per based that on our plan. Or you can't give an based approval on until somebody to come back on consent. Right. Yeah. We've, had, we've run into that too. You could, okay. But we have done approval of the architecture. Yeah, How about support? I'll rephrase the, the motion then to uh, the approval of the architectural changes, including the uh, wooden fence approved as submitted. Landscape to return uh, to consent for approval with the condition to add an additional tree along the western edge of the angled parking drive aisle. And that is assuming that the, the rest of the trees along the western edge could come out. <coughs> so we'd be left with two because we have other trees proposed in this area. Right. Which based on this proposal, that's what he's saying. Right. Yes. This proposal with one more tree. Right. Okay. That's all we can really go on. And uh, Mr. Rivera, you had said you'd revise that to the say that the yeah. wall. That'd be right. two trees. Right. right. That'd understand. be somewhere here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. Okay. Mr. Chair? Yes. Um, Mr. Rivera had said the you said the wall was approved. Did you also say the fence change in fence was approved? Yes. The yes. removal, he meant to okay. say the removal of the wall and the addition of the, the fence. The change to the okay. fence slash wall. Thank you. Really, everything that's proposed. Is approved yeah. with the addition of two trees on the western property line. Correct. That's faster. Yeah, that's a clear. That's a clear it's, motion. I'm getting confused already. It's basically. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Yeah, Rivera. Yeah. Okay. It's so we have a first, a second, uh, under discussion. I have one comment. Is the additional being planted on the property line or is it going to be in the sawtooth planter area? It's on the western edge. On so it's on the property line? Property line. Yeah. So there'll be a total of two trees that on the western edge? Right. Yes. Right. Two okay. trees. Two 15 gallon tip of one trees. And there's one oak in this location. Which is End of that up here somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Feel free to speak. Um, I'd rather leave it open. Just tell them to come back to consent. Providing um, a revised landscape plan with what they want to do and 
and hopefully they'll come back with a little bit more than just those two trees and just sort of leave it open instead of on motion on the table. Yeah. We need to vote on the motion. If it fails, then we can do an alternate motion. Okay. If, if you. So we have a motion. So all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Against? Here. Two against. Three for two against. Sorry. <laughs> motion passed. Moselle and Zinc. 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 Opposed? Um, yeah. More trees. Yeah. Gary and Paul. I, Gary and Paul. I think that eastern wall needs more landscaping. It's, it's pretty. It's pretty bad. It's bad. The trees that the tree is there is not helping without landscaping. So. Yeah. <laughs> I think Might we have can. Been but, off but I want, it's landscaping is coming back to consent, so I want Chris to campaign for some more trees. It's not saying you want to consent. Yes, it is. Just for the showing the, of the trees. The landscaping. Okay. And is that is that indefinite or one week? So you might. Once we can do the irrigation, potentially adding some. It might be good that if you if you could see yourself putting in three or making, I think it would really help. I think it would really help. Does the okay, you heard the that? landscapers. They would try. If they can increase the numbers of trees, they will try their best. Yeah. You can come back next week. Yeah. Oh, one week. One week. Thanks. Okay, thanks. And with that, that uh, brings us to a conclusion of a long evening. Thank you for staying with us. I know it's been a tough night, and um, it's Halloween night. Let's be safe out there. Good night.